Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to another episode of my page to screen series. In this series I take a classic book and compare all of the different TV and film adaptations that they've been of it. In this episode we're going to be looking at Jane Austen's Emma. This is actually part two of my Emma page to screen. If you've not seen part one I'll link it up here and also in the description box below. I always go through adaptations chronologically, so part one was on the earliest adaptations of Emma, so that included Clueless and the Gwyneth Paltrow movie, and this episode is going to include the three most recent adaptations. So the first adaptation that we're going to be talking about in this episode is a BBC miniseries from 2009 starring Romola Garai as Emma. Now I'm not sure what to think about this adaptation because on one hand I absolutely loved it, and then on the other hand I'm not quite sure at some of the choices. This is definitely an Emma directed, written by someone who absolutely loves Emma. You can really see how they've brought out the subtext and it really is a love letter to the novel. I'm not sure I'm convinced that's how an adaptation should be filmed, but let's see. What this series does is bring out the parts of Emma that you wouldn't get on a first read of the book. Maybe you'd get it on a second or third read. So it really focuses on a link between Emma, Jane Fairfax and Frank Churchill and them having some kind of weird link through their childhoods and them all coming together kind of at the end being fate somehow. So it really puts Emma's position at the beginning of the novel in a lot of context. It really makes you understand some of her motivations and you can really see that her her sister has left and her governess has left and now she's bored and it is made very obvious that she's toying with Harriet Smith not malevolently but because she's got nothing else to do really and then from that point onwards throughout the series because it takes place over quite a long period of time they can really drag out some other elements so for example Jane Fairfax in other adaptations has been portrayed quite boringly quite dull the portrayal that in the book we get of Jane through Emma's eyes. In this adaptation you can definitely see that there's some subtext there, there's something that Jane's not telling us and in a way if you take when you're reading the novel Emma as an unreliable viewpoint, an unreliable narrator, then perhaps this version is taking a much more objective stance on what the characters are really like and as an audience you're seeing things that perhaps Emma isn't seeing. For example we definitely get a lot more of a hint that there's something else happening with Frank Churchill whereas in other movies perhaps we've considered him quite innocent to begin with and also there's a really nice mirroring going on here which you don't get in a lot of adaptations between Emma and Mrs Elton. So Mr Elton is the person who loved Emma, gets rebuffed and then goes off and marries this awful awful woman and really the reason she's so awful is that she's like Emma on speed and she's meddling with everybody, she's rude and she takes Jane Fairfax and tries to make her into a project which is exactly what Emma's doing with Harriet and in this series you can really see it and it's actually quite funny so I love all of that, I think this has been handled really well and like I say it's someone who obviously loves Emma and really understands what's going on in it and wants to bring it out for the audience. As much as I enjoyed watching it, as someone who's seen all these different adaptations of Emma, I'm not sure if this is how an adaptation should be because it's maybe making things a little bit too obvious for the audience when perhaps they should be just going along seeing things from Emma's point of view and then perhaps it's more of a shock when there's things um, being uncovered later on. But that really is a minor sticking point because I really very much enjoyed watching this series. Romola Garai is without a doubt my absolute favourite Emma. She is fantastic and she does so well at being endearing, about being a heroine that you love but she's got so many obvious flaws and she just handles it um, so skillfully. I think the best example of this is the Box Hill scene. So when they all go for a picnic on Box Hill and Emma is unspeakably rude to Miss Bates. And Romola Garai is just laughing and she is loving being with Frank Churchill and being in on the joke and being someone who's having a great time and all the other people are really boring. They're having jokes, private jokes at Jane Fairfax's ex expense and everyone else at the picnic really. And she's laughing in a way that I recognise as someone who's been a teenage girl and likes being in on a joke. Um, you, you know, it's that cruel thing that everybody really enjoys if you're in on a joke and it's at somebody else. And it's something you recognise in her and you think that's rude you shouldn't be doing that but it's also something that you recognize in yourself and it's very clever showing her being rude showing her being insufferable but at the same time you still quite like her you still get her 
Another honourable mention has to go to Tamsin Grieg as Miss Bates. I love Sophie Thompson in the Gwyneth Paltrow movie, but Tamsin Grieg is just perfection in this. She made me feel so sad and pity Miss Bates so much and she had so much humanity, so much empathy while still being ridiculous. So in summary, I guess wonderful, wonderful adaptation. Not sure about the direction of it, but I tell you what, this would be really good. This would be great if you're struggling reading, Emma, which I did, to be honest, and the passages about Miss Bates and Mrs Bates in the parlour, I found quite boring, um, as you're supposed to, but I found it a struggle to read. And if you're not really enjoying reading Emma, this is a fantastic series to really make you see how clever Jane Austen is. And it really helps you piece the entire web um, together. So in that sense, although it goes a little bit too far in presenting some of the themes, in my opinion, um, I think this would be fantastic if you really need that extra kick. Next I watched a modern Hindi adaptation called Aisha, which is from 2010. This was okay, it was quite interesting. Um, there's definitely some interesting decisions. As a movie, I didn't think it was great, but it did do some stuff with Emma that I've not seen done in some other adaptations. Aisha is a rich girl in Delhi and she is a self-styled matchmaker. When a young girl, Shafali from Village, comes to Delhi to get married, Aisha takes it under her wing and, you know, does what Emma does with Harriet Smith and tries to make her over in her own image, basically. Um, it follows the story of Emma quite truthfully and it doesn't do anything that crazy apart from one aspect which is that Aisha has a best friend called Pinky who is sort of sarcastic she really doesn't like Shafali hanging around them and what happens is the Mr Elton character who gets rebuffed from uh, by Aisha um, then goes on to marry Pinky and there's a very interesting scene where she has a go at Aisha and, and says oh you know you're just kind of manipulating us and you just like us because we're less pretty than you and it makes you look be more beautiful and it's a bit like, it reminded me of the scene in Pride and Prejudice where um, Lizzie Bennet's friend Charlotte ends up marrying Mr Collins who is ridiculous and Lizzie has rejected and Charlotte ends up marrying him anyway because she's like I just want to get married and that sort of happens in Aisha and I thought that was a really interesting twist on it. I don't know if it was intentionally similar to Pride and Prejudice or it's just a coincidence but I really liked that and there were also times when Shafali is having a go at her and she gets she really gets her moment in this to say to Aisha I'm just a puppet for you you know you're just toying with my life um which Harriet Smith never does because Harriet Smith's just so too nice really so in that sense it does really well of taking the character of Emma or Aisha and showing her up to be the selfish spoiled person that she is and then you really get a little bit more of a transformation at the end so in that sense it was quite interesting. Um, as a movie I thought it was it was just a standard chick flicky kind of movie. I thought it was it was okay. And then the final adaptation of Emma that I've watched is a web series from a couple of years ago called Emma Approved. This is a series of mini uh, YouTube videos of about like five, six, seven minutes long and it follows Emma Woodhouse who is a matchmaker, lifestyle coach and she's documenting her company's success. So she set cameras up in her office and in Mr Knightley's office who is her business partner and in Harriet's office who is her little PA slash assistant. I had no real expectations going into this web series but I must say as an adaptation of Emma it is fantastic. They have adapted the story so cleverly all of the characters are absolutely on the money in terms of their characterization. Um, like for example, Jane Fairfax is this humanitarian person who like Emma is just tired of hearing about. When she comes to work for the company, Emma's like, hey, say hello to the camera. And Jane's like, why, why would I be on camera? <laughs> you just think that's exactly how Jane Fairfax would react. She does not want to be vlogged. And although it kind of drags the story of Emma out a bit and she does, she, she, she has lots of little mini crises that she has to fix. It is actually really faithful to the story and there's lots of little clever things in there. For example, instead of Emma painting a picture of Harriet to give to Mr. Elton, and um, what she does is persuade Harriet to sing a little song on her ukulele. So YouTube. But the song she sings for Mr. Elton is called Picture Perfect. And there's lots of little nods back to what was actually happening in the novel of Emma and like Jane Fairfax, instead of getting a piano, gets a new laptop. And it follows the plot so well and is also really watchable. My experience was probably only hampered by the fact that I wasn't watching it live. And if I'd been getting these small videos every week, it probably would have been a little bit more engaging because they also have breaks in the episodes to do Q and A's and there's a blog of Emma's fashion that you can follow. So it probably would have been a really 
good experience. Watching them all in one go um, is a little bit more difficult, but I am really, really impressed with it. If you like that sort of bite-sized um, cereal uh, type of program, uh, then I think you'd really like this. So overall, a really successful lot of adaptations, I think. I can honestly say I really enjoyed most of the ones that I had to watch. My favourite one, I think, overall, has to be the Romola Garai one, just because I think she is, is my perfect Emma. However, an adaptation from the previous video with Kate Beckinsale, another TV miniseries, I thought was also really, really good. So I think between them, they probably have my favourite kind of Emma, Mr Knightley dynamic and also really, really good side characters. So as always, I would love to hear from you what your favourite adaptation of Emma is. If there's one that I've missed or one that I hadn't heard of, I would also love to hear from you. My next page to screen will be up in a couple of months time, I think, and that's going to be on Herman Melville's Moby Dick. So I'm very excited to get stuck into that and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hearing about people like that, I do find inspiring and it's such an absolute tragedy that the reason I found out is because she got murdered, otherwise I probably would never have known what she was doing, which is to do with my ignorance as well. And it, it's just hearing about things like that, it just makes you want to get politicised, or me anyway, it makes all of this, this whole situation makes me want to get